open. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whenever you're watching today, I'm excited to have you join me on month five of the Quilters Playcation Adventure So Along. Our treasure map is coming along. You can see what we've got going on here. Our water, I'm gonna have to make so much more water blocks, but that's okay. I think it'll be a great sort of border and we'll have the island in the, I'm so excited for how this is gonna to come to be. I was showing my daughter, my 17 year old came almost 17, 10 more days, 10 more eight more days. Um, she came down here last night while I was working on the blocks. And so I was giving her a little tour of what was going on and she was so excited for it. She thought it was really cool. So, hey, if you get the teenagers thumb up, thumbs up, we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited for where this is going on the more literal interpretation of our treasure map. But I'm also really excited for this abstract version. I think it, you get a preview of the block today. Um, I'm really excited for this because it's just so different um, and it shows how you can take the techniques and the ideas of what we're doing um, but do something totally different, right? We could have done this like a, um, a medallion style quilt. Ooh, that could be be a good way to do it because I know what the last month is so it would be good as a center um yeah a medallion style quilt could be very very cool I may have to do one again after it or if you're finding us later that may be an idea for you uh to to change this up um and that's the whole point is this is play this is fun this is an adventure so it can change it can you can roll with it. You can do exactly what I'm doing, although it won't be exact because we're improv. Um, but you can do your own thing, just taking the ideas and the inspiration from what we have going on here. And that's the whole point, right? The whole point is that we're showing up, we're giving ourselves the time, the fun, the adventure, the creative play, and then we get something kind of cool at the end of it if we want. If you don't want, if you never put these into a quilt, that's okay too. All right, so let's get to today's block. Uh, I had in my notes that I wanted to do a block this month. Actually, it was supposed to be last month, but I did the palm tree instead. I swapped those two months. Uh, I wanted to do a booby trap uh, for it. First of all, don't Google booby traps because you get like scary war stuff <laughs> um, in there, more IED kind of scary explosive things. So then you need to add in, you know, fun movies that you have, that you know have booby traps in them. So that's what I did. So I was watching clips from Indiana Jones, clips from the Goonies, from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, all those sorts of things were giving me an idea for uh, what I could possibly do uh, for a booby trap. And so I went with one of the more common booby trap things, which is spikes coming out of either the wall or the floor to kind of pinch you off um, and potentially get you caught. So that's what you can see going on here in our abstract version is we have the spikes. These kind of almost look like stalactites and stalagmites from a cave, if we want to think that way. But these booby traps are often in a cave, at least in the movies. Uh, so it was kind of appropriate uh, to have that there. And then I have started uh, the block for the more literal interpretation. So I have one half. These ones are going to go um, or in the horizontal as opposed to the vertical from there. So we're going to make the other strip here. It's a super easy technique. Um, just one of those repetitive kind of things that goes on. Uh, so we'll get to that in one second. I just need to, I just realized that didn't turn on my computer. Don't know if I have any battery left in it. Um, so that if there's any comments in the chat, because they don't come up, on here for me. So bear with me for one second. And I will just get back to, there we go. This way I can see any comments that come up. So feel free to put comments in the chat because I am now going to be paying attention to those. Um, 
so they're there. So you can say hi, hang out, whatever you want to do. I'm glad you're here. Um, for those of you who are joining, able to join live. If not, you'll catch the recording. It'll all be good. So let's get to sewing, right? That's the fun part. You can listen to me blab all the time. And I did a live yesterday so that you could listen to me blab. But I want to get into the sewing part today. So let's head over here. We will, whoops, why did that not switch? There we go. Say hello to the ladies. We always do that. I have to figure out where I'm going to put her, them when I get to my um, new studio. But for now, I'm just going to need to rotate that. There we go. Got my tested the tripod a little bit more before we started today and I just didn't get her adjusted. So we're going to make the flip side of this. So my spikes are going to go the other way. Um, it's the same process, right? <laughs> You're just flipping it. We don't, I actually prefer, it's much easier from a brain point of view to think of it, make it this way, as opposed to trying to make it sideways because I'm more cutting sideways. So both sides are going to be made the same. They're just going to be rotated in either direction. So for fabric, I've chosen, I went into the stash, um, I have my brown bin out for a totally different project, um, and, but there was this kind of golden color and it's got texture. It would probably be great if you're making a landscape quilt, but I liked that it wasn't super dark. It's somewhere in between, you know, the light background that I'm using for these and the darks. Um, so it will stand out as a block, but not be as dark as my volcano and everything like that and needed to be able to see the spikes. So it's pretty straightforward. I've cut a strip. I've actually cut a couple of strips. Um, I tried to make sure that the directionality of the print is so it's kind of like this grainy, rocky pattern. Um, I don't want to switch it up, right? And have it vertical here, horizontal here. So I cut my pieces to go that way and it's just kind of a scrap. So that's why the by pieces are short, but you could start with a really long, um, strip and then I have these are going to be the spikes in here and um, they're just of this brown and so I kind of pre-cut the rectangles so that I have them ready to go there so let's get to it first things first we're layering our fabrics right sides up not right sides together right sides up and I'm going to go ahead put my ruler on there at an angle and cut this piece gets discarded if there's enough that's big enough for scraps. You can keep that. And then I'm just going to fold that over right here before I pick it up. And I'm going to sew this seam here. It's, it's not exciting sewing, but it's there. And this is basically going to be the entire process the whole time. Layer, cut, sew, repeat. So your spider that you've got, your little scrap of fabric for your starts and stops, that was going to come in handy. You're going to need a lot of them. So there we have that in there. You're going to want to press after each one um, because we really want to make sure we have a good point here. Um, in my case, I am indeed pressing towards the spike. You can choose to press otherwise. It does create a bit more bulk, um, especially when we add the second piece, when we press towards the spike, um, but I really liked the idea of them kind of popping up. So I'm willing to work through that. Okay. Now, next, we're using prints. I'm using prints this time. So it means I can't just flip that over and get my nice, angle and minimize the waste of my scraps. If you're working with solids, that's exactly what you can do, but I'm working with prints, so I can't. So it means that I'm going to be left with, you'll see here in a second, these kind of weird triangles. Um, and so be it. Maybe they'll get used on another block. I don't know. Um, we'll see. I could make a secondary block where the lighter fabrics become. So I've cut that little scrap away. And then I have that. So this is what I'm 
left with is this triangle, which, like I said, could be a spike on another block, right? So, um, but if you do make another block, whatever you use as the background is going to be left as a spike. So maybe it just goes in the scrap bin and gets used for something else. That's fine, right? So I've layered right sides up, cut my spike, and went to sew. And when I do the next spike, I'm going to give you a couple more tips. You can make these spikes as big or as little as you want. Um, it's really up to you. So let's press that. As I said, there's going to be bulk, but if you have a nice hot iron, a little bit of steam or some flatter, it'll be fine. Right? So there we go. So there's my first spike. Now I don't want these super far apart. So I'm not going to go here because the whole point of the booby trap is that there's no way to escape it. Right? So we want to have that relatively close together. If you want, you could overlap the bottoms, right? So that um, your spikes are, you know, just like that. Like there's no gap between them. I have gaps between all of mine. Um, but you could have it so that there's no gaps. It's the same technique either way. I'm going to go for a small gap. We're still layering right sides up, putting my ruler on and cutting. Now, whenever you're making the first cut in these, it's relatively straightforward, right? You make the cut, you flip the fabric, you sew. It's not really rocket science there. You get kind of in a rhythm. Like I think I did this first piece in less than 10 minutes. I'm fast, so if it takes you longer, don't feel bad. Um, and I've done this a million times, so I don't get any confusion, but I'm hopefully showing you how to do this without any confusion. <laughs> in there. Okay. So we have that one pressed. So again, I can't flip this over to get the angle. So I need to move the piece that I've sewn on top of the piece that I'm sewing to, right? One thing we need to make sure we have is that we don't see if I go over here, if I kind of line it up, and I go and I make my cut and I think, okay, that's great. That's going to be a good spike. Fold this back. And what you may be able to see is that I haven't actually, you're not going to be able to see. I'm going to bring you in. I haven't covered over this top corner, so I'm going to end up with a gap. I don't want to do that. So that's the one thing you have to be careful of when you're doing this is that you actually move the piece over enough so that when you cut your spike, you're going to have enough background fabric at the top of it to sew to, right? You don't wanna have a little triangle gap. So I had to move that over quite a bit, right? And we do that. Now, what if you made that cut and you did notice that you had a gap, say, like that? right? That you had a gap like that. Just recut, right? Just move this over and cut again, following the line that you already cut. It's not a big deal, right? So, you know, this one has a quarter of an inch in overlap there. Some of the ones that I did earlier, you know, have very little, um, but it just helps to keep you on track that way. I'm doing that there. Okay, so that is our next spike sewing on. Hope that makes sense. There we go. Spike number two. Press, repeat. Always press in between. It can be very tempting to do these to just keep going because you could chain, not chain piece, but just kind of cut, so repeat real quick. Um, but you want to make sure that you're getting good points and that it's laying, that this background piece kind of stays in a line um, and doesn't kind of start turning 
on you. Um, unless that's what you want, of course. Everybody has design freedom. Um, but we're not going to do it that way. Go ahead and cut there. And do the next one. For those of you who saw my live yesterday, um, thank you. <laughs> Remember, if you're watching these, I try to do, it doesn't always happen, but I try to do a Monday morning live on both YouTube and Instagram, um, just a little update of what's going on in my life, a little vlog sort of thing going on. Um, so I was talking yesterday a little bit about my son's experience with long COVID, which has been challenging to say the least for everybody, especially him. Um, but for everybody, um, but he went to school yesterday and even managed to play after school. So he was happy about that. Good for his mental health as well. Um, and he's there again today. So we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Okay. So I'm going to cut my next spike. You can see, I'm not worried about whether they end at the same part. This is improv. That's just too much trouble. <laughs> so I'm just going to exaggerate that. See, if I cut here, I would end up with this gap right there. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to bring my ruler and I'm going to double check before I make the cut and go ahead and cut that. There we go. This will be spike number three. I'm going to aim for five. That's what I did on the first one. You know, four might work too. Let's, I'll see what it looks like with four. Uh, because it might kind of work if it looks like they're going to interlock a little bit. I don't know. I have the block designed, but the actual, I didn't pre-make this block. And so we're going to see how it comes together, right? Let me take another um, piece here. Now see, I'm at the end of that strip. So I've got to do the same thing when I add this piece on. I'm going to have to make sure that wherever I cut here, right, if I cut like that, I'm not left with this gap. That's really the hardest part of this block, is just making sure that um, you don't have any of those gaps. There we go. All of that. So I'll sew this fourth one and then we'll check it out with the one that I already did. Right, because it might look kind of cool if they're coming together like that. We'll see. And then you can help me decide what I'm going to do for the last portion because I have an idea, but I needed to kind of make the block and see if it worked. If I'm being honest, I wasn't sure. A little design on the fly. Okay, so I'm just curling up a little bit. I did press it, but I'm just gonna give her an extra press so that she doesn't flip up and kind of mess things up. Okay, so there's spike number four. Right, straight there, and I'll sew this piece on, and then we'll see where we're at. How about that? I hope all of you are doing well this week, that you're staying safe. There are fires everywhere, everywhere. It's scary. Um, our air quality has been much improved from some moments in the last few weeks. So make sure your fire safe. Okay. So now, so we made this on the horizontal with vertical stripes. All I have to do to make it work with the other one is just rotate it, right? It doesn't have to be a super fancy. So there I have my spikes coming in. 
And I'm just going to grab one of my scraps to help me decide whether I want to do another one. Right, I can take one of my scraps just to give me the idea that there would be another spike there. And I think I like the unevenness of it. I think from a design perspective, it looks a little bit better. Um, it does have that kind of idea like this coming in. So I'm going to go with that. We're not going to add another spike. See, sometimes we have to kind of stop and look. I just want to move these up a little bit. Right. So if I line up the bottom or what is the bottoms of these strips, I have them kind of lined up this way. I don't love that. I like it looking a little more. See, now those points are lining up. So I feel like I want it a little bit more like that, where it looks like these are going to go into there and vice versa. So obviously my strips are different lengths. Does that matter? No, not at all. Um, I don't want to cut it as short as this because then, well, I probably could. But I think what I'm going to do is just cut some of this off and add it to the bottom here. If there's a seam here, it doesn't matter. But before I do that, I well, I'm going to cut some of this off. Right? I'm just eyeballing that. And then I'm just going to eyeball this, right? Just so I can play with where I'm going. So that gives you a bit of a better idea. Now, initially when I did this, I thought I might insert a strip in the middle, um, but I see that I don't need that. It just makes these wider, which feels somehow less scary <laughs> in all of that. But one idea I did have was to, cause I was thinking of Indiana Jones and there's that one scene where they're like, there's like a ball rolling down. Um, I did have the idea, and I'm just going to cut a piece of fabric because why not, of doing something that kind of looks like a ball through the middle. Um, I was thinking I might actually applique that, so actually cut that into a circle um, and applique it on. But even just seeing it here, I think it takes away from this. Um, idea from these sort of spikies um, thing. I think this is stronger graphically to have it this way. I may change my mind down the line and add a ball um, in there. Maybe this just isn't the right fabric. I just picked it out because it had that circular sort of shape um, to it. So it might just be not the right fabric or I need to hear because I, I thought maybe I could just sort of piece it in there and it be sort of a little bit more abstract but let's just cut this out as a circle Ooh, my scissors need sharpening i have to try to do that this weekend they've never been sharpened and i'm just just in the last few months really noticing um a difference so there is it if I do it as more. See, that looks a little bit better. Um, so it may be that I actually just quickly applique that on afterwards. Um, you could do it by machine. You could do it by hand. Whatever you want. Or don't do it at all. It's entirely up to you um, in that realm. So I'm just going to leave that aside for the time being. I'm going to sew this piece to here so that I can make this longer. And then I'm going to trim these up so that I can sew them together. Right. So let's just add this piece. So a lot of threads here, so I'm going to cut them off. Minimize what's behind there. So I'll just press that. Doesn't really matter which direction you press that one in if you need to. You may not need to do this, right? Um, it's just the way mine worked out here. Okay, so now I've got to join these two pieces together. Um, I could take my ruler, you know, square up each strip individually, totally could do that. Or I can make my life easier 
by making sure I'm where I want to be, right? If I line up the bottoms, yep. So if I line up the bottoms of the block and then I just flip one on top of the other and give myself a straight cut across this, that's all I need to do. That's all I need to do. I do need a longer ruler though. Um, let's just, you know, make our lives a little bit easier. Why make more work? Because I'm not squaring up my blocks after the fact. So I can just do this, get my nice clean cut and sew that together, right? Now, as you're sewing this seam, I'm just gonna move you over here. As you're sewing this seam, you are gonna want to make sure you're always stopping with the needle down because I'm really trying to make sure I don't flip seam allowances. And I think I already did flip one. Um, so I'm just gonna go a little slower just because that's gonna make it bulky and kind of potentially diminish the points of your space. Okay, you know how it goes. Press that and then I show you the final block. Oh, I managed to not flip any points, that's good. I am gonna press this seam open. Um, you know me, I don't typically do that, but sometimes it's just the right call um, because of all those points and the bulk of those seams. Um, from the points, a lot of intersections uh, and stuff coming to the middle. I'm just going to press open to make sure all of that stays as flat as can be so that my spikes are what I'm really emphasizing in the block. Okay, give the block the final press. I'm just going to trim off a little extra bit that I've got going on there. And there's our final block, right? I like this one showing this way so that my spikes are on the horizontal because imagine, you know, you're a person walking through here. You got to watch out for the spikes um, in there. So if I wanted to do the ball, you know, maybe I applique it on kind of there, um, you know, or is it at the top? coming through or not at all, right? It's entirely your choice um, with that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one like that. So that is our booby trap block in there. There is the more literal version and here is the abstract version. So you can see the spikes are on the vertical here, um, it works well because I have rows that I'm making instead of individual blocks, but this one works really quite well too. So let's put them both on the design wall and see how they look with the rest of our blocks. All righty. I'm gonna move my volcano down just so we can kind of see. All right, let's say goodbye to the ladies for this month. We'll flip you around. Hi, it's me again. So there we have our blocks um, that you can see going on in there. I'm just gonna move that volcano down and out of the way um, in all of this. It might look cool when I assemble the quilt top, not sure. Um, maybe I kind of curve the edges so it looks a little bit more like a cave um, or it just serves as, the block serves as a warning on the map, right? That there is um, a booby trap to watch for because that may be the case entirely as well. And then you can see how this one works here. Um, the green one, I've, I've shifted it because I made the purple block without kind of looking at the other ones. This is a really sort of deep purpley blue and I don't like the composition of 
this, your abstract palm frond right over top of this. I, and even if I flip this one, I got the same sort of thing. So composition wise, it didn't work for me. So I'm going to shift this over and all I have to do is cut off this excess bit and sew it on this end. One more seam. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. So that is month five of the Quilter's Playcation Adventure Sew Along. I hope you enjoy making this block. It's one of those ones that really simple, bit repetitive. Um, but such a great impact um, to it. It's just gonna have a really strong graphic element to our quilt. Um, you could make it smaller, right? Like I'm not worrying about scale <laughs> on these ones. Um, so it is the size of our volcano, um, but that's okay. That's totally okay, right? We're, we're making a quilt. We're not making a painting that's realistic, right? It's abstract, it's fun, it's a little bit silly uh, in there. So have fun with it. Um, I also highly recommend having a rewatch of The Goonies. <laughs> um, maybe some Pirates of Caribbean, but The Goonies is still my favorite pirate movie. Or Indiana Jones or any of those things. I think uh, it's a good fun I way to get inspiration, right? Is taking other people's creativity um, and adapting it for ours in there. So that is it. For me today, that is again, month five of the Quilters Placation Adventure Sew Along. Make sure to check out the other videos if you haven't seen them yet. They are all here in this curated playlist for you. Uh, if you have questions or comments, if you're not watching this live and they come later, feel free to put them in. I do pay attention. Happy to answer your questions there. Uh, and if you're really interested in these videos, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube YouTube channel so you get the notifications when we do indeed go live uh, with everything. So I will see you, I think, next month. <laughs> Um, I am traveling and so I think I will be here the first Tuesday of July. I will not be here the first Tuesday of August, um, but we will definitely be here in July. So I will see you then. If not, I will see you on Instagram, the Monday morning lives and wherever else you can catch me. Remember, just use my name anywhere you want to find me. It's Cheryl Arkison and this has been the Quilters Playcation Adventure Sew Along Month 5. Take care, everybody. Bye.